Hello fellow problem solvers. So today we're going to be doing a problem from the 2021 IMO, problem number four. This is a quite cute geometry problem that I suggest you try for a minimum of 30 minutes, ideally an hour and a half, but not more than four hours. If on the other hand you'd like to go along with us, I suggest you draw the diagram and put your first ideas out on paper for the next 10 minutes. So now let's begin. So the first lesson in this problem is in diagram drawing. So this was my first diagram. We had this circle with center I, and then I had a problem that this whole, this circumcircle around AIC did not intersect BA over A, but rather intersected it over B. So then I saw, okay, so I need to maybe make, what happens if I make B have a big angle, ABC have a big angle then, what do I get? I still get it over B. So let me try the opposite. And once I try the opposite, have the angle ABC be acute, quite acute actually, then I got the diagram I needed. And now let me move on to the better diagram. Okay, so now we have somewhat of a decent diagram. And now what's the first thing we can do in this problem to explore it further, to explore? So we have this statement. And what would be the first thing you would do? And for me, the first thing here is like, let me just do angle chasing. Let me see what angles I have. Let's call this alpha half, alpha half, this beta, this gamma half, and gamma half, and this whole angle, let it be called say phi. Okay, and now we have the four angles. We have alpha plus beta plus gamma plus phi is 360 and Let's do some more angle chasing. I actually invite you here to pause for five to 10 minutes, do some angle chasing and see what it is you notice given your angle chasing. So for me, the first thing was, because this is our circumcircle around AIC, I wanted to see what's the angle AIC. Because CAI, I might not be able to get just now, but this is the one angle I can get quite quickly. And the way to see this is this angle plus this one plus this one plus this one is 360, which and this is 360 minus this angle. But 360 minus this angle is equal to this plus this plus this. So we get that the angle AIC is equal to beta plus alpha half plus gamma half, which means what? Well, if we're looking at this intersection BC, this means that the angle on the chord AC is going to be what? We need to get this to 180, so it needs to be, so we have A, say AZC is equal to half of phi minus half of beta, because you need the sum of AIC plus AZC to be 180. You have this over here, half of this is equal to 180. So what do we have? We have half of alpha, half of gamma, we have an extra half of beta more, and we're missing half of phi. So we get that this is phi minus beta half. And now let me draw maybe AZC. I mean, we could be looking at this, but this is just the first angle I thought of. So this is half of phi minus half of beta. And now what do we have? We have ZAY, we can get it because, okay, what do we have? We have alpha in this triangle ZAB, we have alpha, we have beta, we have minus beta half. Okay, so we have an alpha, we have half of beta, we have uh, half of phi, and that means we need to subtract alpha half and add gamma half. So that means that this angle is gamma half minus alpha half. And in this case, it's like that because it happens that gamma is greater than alpha. And with that, in a similar way, so we know that ZAY is equal to what? Is equal to gamma half minus alpha half. And in the same way, we will get that the angle TCX is equal to gamma half minus alpha half. And now what does this give us? Well, because they are on the same circle, ZY and TX, and they're, the chords have the same angles, that means that ZY is equal to TX. And now we can immediately just forget about these things and focus on the rest of the problem, which is what, what do we have? We have AD plus DT plus XA needs to be equal to CD plus DY plus ZC. And now let's see what do we have with this? 
I invite you maybe here to pause for another five, 10 minutes and try to push the problem further yourself. And for me, the next push was, we have AD plus DT plus XA. Let me see what that is. So here's XA, AD, DT. And now I know this is a tangential quad quadrilateral. So I want to see like, wait a second, instead of AD, I have like AD plus BC is equal to what? It's equal to AB plus DC. And maybe if I switch out AD here, like make say AD is AB plus DC minus BC, maybe I'll get something more interesting. And once you do that, like this is true, if and only if, so when you switch it out, what do you have? You have AB on this side and the CDs cancel out and you get BC on the other side. BC, you have AX plus DT and here you have ZC plus DY. Now, AB plus AX is equal to what? It's equal to BX. And we have BX plus DT is equal, like this is true if and only if, BX plus DT is equal to what? Well, we're going to have BZ, BZ plus DY. And now look at this. So BX, BZ, DT, DY. And I was actually angle chasing for a while here and I couldn't really get to anything. And then a moment of insight came to me. And here's where I would invite you to pause for 20 minutes and figure out what your next step is. Because for me, my next step was just something that I played around with and that gave me a solution. And it involves a perspective change. So here's maybe the first sort of idea, which is the perspective change. I know that IX and IZ are equal. IT, IY are equal. I believe that is the case, just due to angle chasing IX. This angle is alpha. IY, I think you need you get this angle right here, or no, it's not IY. Maybe it's O, oh, maybe it's IZ. IZ gives you, actually, no, wait a second. AD intersect, yes. So IX is IY, IZ is IT. And I was thinking about, so wait a second, how can I, hmm, how can I combine these things? Like, how can I, how do I calculate this? I was thinking of this in terms of maybe I can make right take a point on say so what do I have I have bx and bz well maybe I take a point on bz x prime such that bx is bx prime then I prove that this thing right here is equal to the equivalent once I take it on d and that didn't work out for me but a little thing stayed and now I invite you maybe here to pause me with this little, little bit of a perspective change to look at what is I? For example, in, tri in the triangle X, A, Y, what is I? And what is I for the triangle T, Z, and C? T, Z, and C. So what is I for these two triangles? And maybe from there think about, is there anything that you could maybe do or notice to push this further? And here I actually do invite you with these couple of hints and maybe I'm trying to hint at what I came up with and what my thought process was by saying, take now 10 minutes, ask yourself, what is I? And can that give you anything for these lengths? And maybe a final hint is for me, this sort of thing reminded me of something about tangency. It really, really felt like I needed to go for some tangency here. And with that, I will invite you to take 20 minutes and try to come up with an idea and push the problem further and maybe even solve it. So here's the next idea. So this is the gra diagram that solved the problem for me. Namely, I, if you look at a triangle C, Z, T, I is the center of the arc Z, T, because I, C, B and I, C, D are both gamma half. And with that, I was thinking, okay, does I, does if I have C, I, Z, X, Y, and T, does that divide, define B, D, or A? And I couldn't quite get to an answer. So I was thinking of a lemma that I knew about this. And that's when you put a perpendicular from I to T, C, and call this point P. Then we know that C, P plus C, Z 
is equal to PT. And the way you prove this lemma, you can prove it by trigonometry, or you can also prove it by congruency, namely let the point, let this thing right here be, I don't know, K. And now what do you have? You have CK and CP are going to be equal because both of these are gamma half, you have I, you have these perpendiculars. So then what you need to prove is that KZ is equal to PT. And how do you prove this? Well, again, you have the angles this angle right here and this angle right here are identical. IP and IK are equal. And given you have all the angles now equal, this is right. So IK, IP, which means IZ, IT are equal. You know that. And that gives you KZ and PT are equal. And now take a five minutes and look back to the problem and see, is does this give us anything nice? And here's the answer to that. So this is the diagram. These are the two perpendiculars, P and Q. And what we have from our little lemma is that CQ plus CZ is equal to QT and AP plus AX is equal to PY. And now what we need is XB plus DT is ZB plus DY. And okay, so maybe the best way to look at this is in terms of subtractions, XB minus ZB and DT minus DY. I mean, DY minus DT actually. So here what we have, and why do I look at it in terms of subtractions is because I want to subtract this so badly because DQ and DP are identical. And what happens when I do that? Well, I get, so CQ plus CZ, let's actually add these two points, K and L. And now CQ plus CZ is actually going to be equal to CL plus CZ, which is going to be equal to LZ is equal to QT, and we'll have KX, similarly, AP is AK, and we'll have KX is equal to PY. And now what happens when we subtract? Well, we get LZ minus KX is equal to QT minus PY. Now what is QT? QT is equal to QD plus DT minus PD plus DY i.e. QD and PD cancel out, i.e. this is DT minus DY. What do we need? We need DT minus DY, or the opposite. And what is this going to be equal to? Well, we have LZ and we have KX. Well, let's add BK and subtract BL. So this thing right here, if we add BL and subtract BK, nothing changes to the entire sum. So this plus LZ minus KX, and this is equal to BL plus LZ minus BK plus KX. And now this thing right here, BL plus BZ is BZ, and this is going to be minus BX. So we have BZ minus BX, BZ minus BX is equal to DT minus DY, i.e. BZ plus DY, is equal to what? Bx plus dt. What is it that we needed to prove? Bx plus dt is bz plus dy, which is what we just proved. But before we do that, I would like to pause and say, what can we learn from this problem? And the things we can learn are one, previous knowledge in geometry is very, very useful. I literally just put these perpendiculars down here not because I was planning on doing anything, but because I was exploring a configuration I knew. And I thought this could give me interesting sums. Also follow some hunches, like this really struck me as something to do with tangency, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. Also perspective changes are incredibly useful. I only figured that this lemma can be applied here because I changed my perspective. I changed my perspective as to what this whole triangle was. I looked at this as a triangle with the midpoint of the arc. And now with these couple, with these lessons, let's write up a solution and note this. Once you write up a solution, you're really solving the problem backwards. You're solving from what we found out at the end and you're trying to build up a case for the whole problem. And I would invite you here to pause for 10 to 30 minutes and try to write up a good, elegant solution to this. Here's my solution. So the first thing we do in our solution is we set up this lemma. We first prove a lemma one, let ABC be a triangle with circumcircle W, let M be the midpoint of this arc, PQB perpendiculars from M to AC and AB, 
and then AP and AQ are equal to the absolute difference between AB and AC over 2. And we prove this just like using congruency. And now we move on to our problem. Namely, the next step is we say this. We prove that XT is equal to ZY because the angles over the chord XT and ZY are equal. And now let's call this thing right here 2. And now we move on to the third claim, namely. And now we have claim 3, which is this. And from here, we move our way backwards. Namely, we go from this to the solution. And the way we do this is, we get this. So from bx plus dt is dy plus bz. We just do a series of transformations. And then we get what we needed to prove and write QED. And now this solves our problem. And as always, thanks for problem solving.